So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ahmaduhu wa salli ala Rasulul Kareem, Amma ba'd. From the very beginning, I want to mention a very important point, and that is that the retreat of the enemies does not mean the rise of yourself. The two are not necessarily interlinked. If uh, somebody hurts or if my enemies have to retreat and they get hurt, then it does not mean that I myself have become great. And sometimes we take anti-Western sentiments that we have because of the oppression to equal that to the rise of Islam and the two are not. What I want to discuss today is the Khurasan in Quran. We all know the sayings of the Prophet ﷺ regarding Khurasan in the Hadith literature. But today I want to point out where Khurasan is mentioned in Quran and uh, why it is significant. And so with this, inshallah, we begin first from the Quran in Surah Al-Kahf where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, بَعْدَ أَوْذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ In the second travel of Zul Qarnayn, حَتَّى إِذَا بَلَغَ مَطْلِعَ الشَّمْسِ Until he reached the place where the rising of the sun وَجَدَ وَجَدَهَا تَطْلُ عَلَى قَوْمٍ And he saw the sun rising over a people لَمْ نَجِدْ لَهُمْ مِنْ دُونِهَا سِطْرَ لَمْ نَجِدْ They couldn't find لَهُمْ for themselves مِنْ دُونِهَا From other than the sun any sitra any cover meaning it was a very hot place it was a desert but before I go forward I would like to make one point and that is that why Zulqarnain's three journeys are mentioned and I want to give the answer from the beginning and then I'm going to explain it one journey is to show you the fasad the people of fasad and one journey is to show you the people that will answer that facade. He can't answer that facade. He has to build a wall until a certain time. But the answer of that facade will come from the other direction. And then the third journey is about where this clash will take place. The area of Turkey, as mentioned in many of the ahadith, those of you that are aware of it are aware of it. But... Kustantunia is mentioned in the sayings of the Prophet. So Kustantunia, the area of Kustantunia, this area becomes the area of the clash. And then the, the one journey is to the people of Khurasan, as I will discuss. That's where the deserts are. And then the people of Ya'juj and Ma'juj were the people of Fasad. So this now I will discuss. A place where you can't really protect yourself from the sun and a place that has very little trees, very cold nights, very hot days. It was a desert. And so this is where Zulqarnain went. Now, if Zulqarnain is Cyrus the Great, if Zulqarnain is Cyrus the Great, then this will fit also from this perspective. Why? I'm going to show you. So before, you know, the Jews asked the Prophet ﷺ three questions and the Jews knew their Bible. The Jews knew their Old Testament. And in the Old Testament, there's a very important book that has to do with prophecies called Daniel, the book of Daniel. So we're looking at the book of Daniel and I want to show you in the book of Daniel that the word, okay, Zulqarnain, you should see that. وَأَمَّا كَبَشْ As for the ram, الَّذِي رَأَيْتَهُ The one that I saw in my dream. This is Prophet Daniel saying this in the Bible. ذُلْقَرْنَيْنِ And this is referring to who? 
according to the Jews. Zulkarnain or Zulkarnain is none other than Cyrus the Great. So the people of the book themselves admit that it is Cyrus the Great who is their non-Jewish Messiah, which is why when Zulkarnain allowed them, when Zulkarnain allowed them to leave Babylonia and go back to Jerusalem, he was considered the non-Jewish Messiah. And when Donald Trump allowed Jews to, when Donald Trump moved the capital of Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, this was seen as a similar move or a similar thing that Zulkarnain, meaning Cyrus the Great, had done. Let me show you something that you will find interesting. So in Israel, they have made this coin, okay, uh, for the temple, okay? And in the temple coin, they have, this is Trump, and behind Trump is Cyrus the Great, because he is their Messiah. He's their non-Jewish Messiah, who allowed the Jews to go to Jerusalem, and Trump has done the same. Now, the only point I'm trying to make with this is that if if Cyrus the Great is Zulkarnain, which the Christians and the Jews both consider Cyrus the Great to be Zulkarnain, and since they were the ones asking the question to the Prophet, who is Zulkarnain, and since we know today 100% without any doubt that Zulkarnain, according to the Christians, is Cyrus the Great. Okay, there's no doubt about this. So now, let us now move forward with this. So now the question comes, did Zulkarnain, did he conquer any lands? Did he go to any lands that had deserts in it? Because Zulkarnain was in Persia. And Cyrus the Great moved from Persia into the lands of the desert which today is known as Khorasan, okay, that land. So Cyrus the Great, uh, let me just show you very quickly, the empire, so the empire, by the way, when you look at Cyrus the Great, his picture, you'll see also the two horns, okay, but that is not what I want to emphasize right now. There are many proofs that Cyrus the Great is most likely, more likely than not, Cyrus the Great. But what I want to show you is this was his empire. Okay? This became his empire. And so this green portion is where it was the empire of Zulkarnain. And this makes sense from the Quranic narrative also. But what I wanted to emphasize here is that if Cyrus the Great, his original, remember, this is now Babylon is here. Okay, and so he conquered Babylon and then he let the Jews go back to Jerusalem over here. Okay, so he let the Jews go back to Jerusalem from Babylon. And the point here is that he conquered this area that we call Khorasan. And it has been described in the Quran in the words of Hatta Ida Balaga Matli Ashams until it reached the setting of the sun. Now you'll be but this is not direct. Well the the methodology of Quranic study of Imam Shafi was if there's a hadith, so if the Prophet mentions Khurasan and Zulkarnain together. And we find now there is an ayah that indicates that Khorasan and Zulkarnain were together. It is pretty conclusive. Okay. Hatta ida, and I'm going to show you the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that mentions Khorasan and Zulkarnain together in a little bit. Hatta ida balaga matli ashams until he reached the place where the sun was rising in the east. Wajadaha tatlu'u. And that sun is rising over a people ala qawmin lam 
lam tajid lahum min duniha min duniha sitra in this ala qawmin ala using against meaning against so this rising of the sun is like it's working against the people and they had no sitra they had no shelter they had no shade and they were in the desert now let me combine this ayah with the saying of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam on this subject Imam Musnad Ahmad, rahimullah, he narrates Abu Hurairah radiyallahu an from Abu Hurairah, Samirat Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yaqul, I myself heard the Prophet say, which adds to the strength of the hadith, one of the factors, satakunu ba'di, ba'di ba'uthun. The Prophet, after me, there will be many armies that are going to go. Kathiratun, many of them. فَكُونُوا فِي بَعْسِ الْخُرَسَانِ And there will be armies that will be sent to Khurasan. This already happened historically. ثُمَّ نزلوا مَدِينَةِ الْمَرْوَى And you will come to a city known as Marwa. فَإِنَّهُ بَنَاهَا ذُو الْقَرْنَيْنِ Now that city in Khurasan was built by Khur, by Zulqarnayn. دَعَالَهَا and Zulqarnayn did dua to Allah for that particular city. Da'a laha bi barakati wa la yudhurru ahluha su. That city will not be hurt by the armies that will try to invade it. So this area of Khurasan has a special significance. It's one of the places Zulqarnayn went to. Okay. And the indication of that is this particular hadith along with this verse of the Qur'an that Zulqarnayn went to a place Zulqarnayn or Cyrus the Great went to a place in which there was no protection from the sun and so then let me also then further show you this okay Khurasan is generally this area okay and then let me show you more specifically, this is Khurasan, you can see this area here is part of Khurasan. So now Khurasan includes, you see this desert, Karakum Desert. Karakum Desert. And this Karakum Desert is near a city known as Mari or Marwa, which perhaps the Prophet ﷺ indicated to in this region because this is the city of Marwa or Mari in Khurasan area proper. So now let me also then show you this is the Karakum Desert that I was referring to, and uh, so you have. Uh, you have let me show you so the city of marwa is here and this is part of khorasan turkmenistan all of this area of turkmenistan this is khorasan and uh, i just want to point out that hold on so you see this pink area over here uh this pink area over here if you see kabul is at the at the end of this pink which is Khurasan proper, okay? And Marv is the city which is right at the center of Khurasan proper, okay? But, and, and then so you have Turkmenistan having some of these cities that probably Khurasan, so he was, this is where Iran is, Persia is where Zulqarnayn ruled, and then he went into this desert area of Afghanistan, Turkmenistan, is Arab Khurasan, and this is where he did his dua. Now, uh, having said that, there is a lot more to say, but I'm going to keep it simple today. And that is that uh, there's a difference between the enemy retreating and victory for your own deen. These two things are not the same. And we have to be very careful because history is going to unfold itself very quickly. In the coming times and you know um, Taliban is one step forward in the right direction
But is this going to be the army that has the black flags? There are reasons to say yes and there are reasons to say no. But we can say, Alhamdulillah, this is a progress towards that journey. This is a progress towards that journey. Because Taliban or is, is, is you can say, built, it is built, the Taliban group is built specifically, uh, you can say, for the Afghan culture and the Afghani people. And... Uh, so we will see how their progress grows in the next 20 years and how their education goes and until taliban does not get rid of paper money and does not remove itself from the system as a whole from the international monetary paper money system they cannot establish khilafah and it is for this very reason that the fall of nation states, the fall of all of currencies is inevitable and has to happen because Yamhakullah riba, Allah destroys riba, wa yurbis sadaqat, and Allah increases the sadaqat. And there is no khilafah until the fathers in Afghanistan give their, their daughters their inheritance. And there's no khilafa in Afghanistan and Taliban until they get rid of paper money. So it is a step forward and we will see how much Taliban is able to deal with the other fuqaha, the, the Maliki, the Shafi'i, the Hanbali. Uh, and one of the things Taliban needs to do is to invite some of the great scholars who they even disagree with, like let's say Sheikh Yusuf Qardawi. And they need to invite international scholars of Islam. They need to invite people like Sheikh Imran Hussein, Sheikh Yusuf Qardawi, and others who. Uh, Mullah Taqi Usmani, Mufti Taqi Usmani, for example, even him. They need to invite and open their doors to other Islamic scholars so that they can arrange the uh, political order in Afghanistan according to Islam. One of the mistakes Iran made, which I see Taliban making, is that of, uh, when the Iranian revolution happened, the Ayatollahs came on top. They created a new class. And if just a revolution happens and Taliban come on top, and the mullahs are ruling the people, or the Ayatollahs are ruling the people, then this is just creating a new class of elite. In Islam, it should be anyone can go and knock on the doors of the court and say this is not allowed in Islam. Rather than having a, a a group of ulama that say this is right and this is wrong, there should be a proper court system, and there should there needs to be due process, and people cannot be punished in the streets, and they cannot be given ta'zir according to except according to the rules of Islam, and so we're. We are in a better place in some ways, but I want everyone to be doing du'as and to be optimistically cautiously optimistic and to have serious concerns because now the real situation begins. The real test begins now. And Taliban has done some very good things. Uh, like, for example, declare a general amnesty, which the Prophet did وسلم, when he did Fatul Makkah. But Allah has given them this victory, Taliban has this victory, without its public being convinced Islam is the right way to go. In the case of the Prophet, he was doing a gra grassroots da'wah work, grassroots ideological work, grassroots work. The Prophet was doing it وسلم, from the very beginning, and then it naturally came to the top. Over here you have a solid jama'ah, 
But the jama'ah, the Taliban, have not convinced its own people Islam is the way to go. So they need to use the media and the resources that they have to their advantage and to maybe even have debates on TV between different communist thoughts in Afghanistan, different atheistic thoughts in Afghanistan, between liberal thoughts in, Islam, of, uh, uh, in Afghanistan, and to challenge them on TV in front of everyone for everyone to see and break those wrong ideologies for the public to see. Okay, and so it's very, very important that Taliban take the right steps of convincing its people that Islam is the way to go. And that the Muslims should be doing du'a for them and have our best wishes for them. And the Muslims should uh, keep advising them. And this is uh, a good thing, even if nothing happens, even if Khilafah doesn't happen. Okay, Alama Iqbal talks about this in his book of Reconstruction of Religious Thought. He talks about like many groups, like many states, who are like a semi-model, not the full model of Islam, but they establish some aspects of Islam before the final, like the Mahdi, you know. So if there is even 20 years of peace and generally good ruling and generally a spirit of Islam is there, but even if everything is not perfect, it's still a good step forward. We will take you from one phase to the other phase. So this has to happen before the big one happens. And so uh, it is, if Afghanistan does not come out of its currency model, then it will fall like all other countries will fall. And maybe that will be the barak of Allah because then the old Khurasan will be reconstructed uh, the re the old Khurasan might be made again rather than being broken by these artificial borders that we have but that's a secondary issue the main issue is that number one yes uh, Khurasan is a place of baraka the prophet has mentioned many narrations and there is a aspect of, of Zulqarnain that is connected to these lands and Zulqarnain was a man of victory. He was a sword amongst the swords of Allah. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has pointed to this aspect of Zulqarnain's journey. And so he saw these people, they had no sitra and they had no cover from the sun. Right? Uh, and كَذَلِكَ قَدْ أَحَتْنَا بِمَا لَدَيْهِ خُبْرَ And so it was, we've had full knowledge of what he had. Okay. كَذَلِكَ And it is like this. And this word كَذَلِك is used in Quran when something miraculous happens. When Maryam said, how will I have? He said كَذَلِك. How will I have a son? كَذَلِك. That's how it is. So there is a miraculous aspect that Sulqarnain going there, Kadalik, that's how it is. Hatta Ida Balaga Matli Ashams until he came to a place where the rising of the sun was Wajadaha Tatluana Komin Lam Tajit Lahum Minduni Sitra. These people on the one side is the people of Fasad, Ya Jujin Majuj, and its antidote. The antidote, he also met them. And then he came in the middle where the sun was going into the Black Sea or in the Lake of Sivan, which is my more opinion is Lake Sivan. But this area will be the place where the battles will primarily happen in Turkey. The big battles will happen around Turkey. So these three journeys, you can say one is the journey of seeing the facade. One is the journey of where the help will come from against that facade and until then he put a wall and in the middle of that place where he journeyed is where the 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 much of the wars will take place and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he obviously knows absolutely the best